The Motueka River is an iconic New Zealand waterway and for the past 10 years it's been the focus of an intensive study by scientists. The goal of the Integrated Catchment Management or ICM program has been to gain better information to more effectively manage the land, water and coastal environments in catchments where there are many and potentially conflicting land uses and to do so in a way that we understand both the complex way a catchment works and the way people work within it. Conflicts and perceptions of such things as water allocation or worsening water quality mean that we need to find new ways to manage our land and water and coasts in an integrated way and to do this collaboratively. So what does it mean to manage the catchment in an integrated way and what challenges does this bring? At the start of this program, I think um, catchment management was seen as um, a, a lot of disparate groups uh, aiming perhaps for a common vision of sustainable management of land and water, that's what it's about. But you have farmers who are saying, well we're custodians of the land and we are operating our businesses for our children and children's children. And then you have a bunch of scientists who have a lot of knowledge and tools about the processes that are going on that are influenced by the way farms and um, resource users operate. And I think the challenge of ICM has been to bring all those parties together in a, in a well, the, the modern parlance is collaborative um, dialogue. The question is, well, how can you actually engage all those users of water, in that case, to be making the changes that the policy is asking for? For the program to succeed, it required a special kind of leadership. Program leadership is actually something that isn't necessarily the, the, um, the role of one individual. And I certainly didn't feel confident about um, designing and, and uh, enunciating a vision all by myself. So I think one of the, one of the um, challenges for leadership is actually how to motivate and, and engage a whole range of people in, in a common purpose. So it's building that common vision. Um, it's not necessarily everyone having the same uh, view, but at least they're prepared to share their views to reach that common vision. And that, that's fundamental to leadership. Over the course of the program, different devices were developed to try and bridge the gap between different stakeholders' understanding of the problems, from providing frameworks for social interaction and learning to facilitated forums, all with the focus of enhancing the capacity of stakeholders by engaging in new and different ways. One of the devices that we used was a photographic technique where people actually took photographs of the catchment, the environment, and they, um, the photograph was stimulated by the question, what is it that I see here that is being taken care of and what is, what is it um, not being taken care of? And so when they came to meet together, they'd already explored these questions for themselves and they'd already um, got a set of images which represented their views and could be shared equally with everybody else. I think people actually really connected to that process. I think that they, um, they found themselves um, being able to connect with people in ways that they um, hadn't ever previously done. Another was the Travelling River Exhibition. The Art Science Collaboration, that was a, um, a really interesting program because I think um, one of the ways I've often felt about that was we, we had um, we had artists working with us, we had um, biophysical scientists, we had social scientists, we had um, you know, people from all sorts of walks of life as well. We had community people who were part of that project. That to me is, it was a real example of how, um, uh, you know, how things change as you, as you learn how to listen and how to um, work with other people. For the scientists involved in the ICM program, there were some shifts in thinking that needed to occur in order to reach the goal of integration. Integration is really hard for science programs because within science programs we have cultures, cultures of biophysical science, cultures of social science. All our diff different disciplines have their own language, so a lot of the integration is about seeing the, seeing the bigger problem out there in the catchment and then saying how can we contribute into, into helping that bigger problem it's very easy to get caught up with the shorter term goals of we're trying to make my farm profitable, we're trying to get a better regulation in place, but if we all keep the outcomes in mind then it's a case of just working together to, to be creative about how we do that. And as the changes began to occur there was a shift not only at the program level but at a personal level as well. Right at the start, I mean I think the expectation I had was that we would learn a lot more about 
what was going on within the catchment in a biophysical sense. What I didn't expect was that we would know more about what's required in order to get that much more integrated um, approach or in integrated understanding of what makes a catchment and the people who interact with it tick. So, so one of the key things that, that for me was in relation to the art science project was the re this whole idea of the relationship of people to the place, the place that they're connected to. And to me that's that's kind of one of those concepts that's at the heart of what integrated catcher management is about. Yeah, p people uh, have different worldviews, particularly if they come from very different disciplines uh, and from different backgrounds. I think one of the key things about the partnership we've developed here is that we've come to understand each other's worldviews. We may not all see the world the same way still, um, but we at least understand how others see the world. This is the way of the future. Um, we, w we want to move away from this polarised um, debate that we have about land and water use. We want to understand each other's views and we want to work out ways to resolve them. I th and I think what we've developed here in the ICM programme is a pointer to how we might be able to do that. And that's a view endorsed by International Review Panellist Jeff Kamkin. Several things stood out to me that, that can be um, beacons for researchers and research in other parts of New Zealand and, and indeed the world. Um, the collaboration between science and the community, particularly the farmers, um, was, was outstanding. Um, and we heard many good, really good and interesting stories about the way the farmers had, had uh, contributed to improving water quality to help meet the local community's uh, objectives for allowing the children to swim in the river again. The new understanding of the river plume ecosystem and the idea of extending the definition of a catchment all the way from the hills out into the Tasman Bay, um, taking into account the area of, of deposition was uh, very interesting and, and I can easily see how this sort of thinking can be used in, for example, um, uh, marine planning for aquaculture in the bay or in any bay. And the third area I think that was, that was outstanding was the use of social science tools um, to generate a great sense of cohesion between researchers and the local community. Um, the Watershed Talk program, for example, um, designing processes to empower the people in the catchment to get their story across. The sense of cohesion that we had in the room in hearing these, these uh, dialogues from the farmers, from the researchers, from um, the local government um, was um, very, very powerful and um, certainly helped us understand how far the community and the researchers have travelled uh, over that 10 years.